Thank you, Dan. So, um, good morning and good evening to everyone. So, um, I am Elaine Manzon. You can call me Ali. Um, I am the G GIS Technical Officer of the Disaster Management Services of Philippine Red Cross. So, tonight, I am going to um, discuss on uh, how we did the drone mapping in our vulnerability and capacity assessment. So, to give background, um, PRC are not really into drones yet, uh, to be honest. Um, I think um, this is the first time, in my knowledge, that uh, PRC um, conducted a drone mapping. We have been using drone mapping, but only for assessment or for um, communications, you know, um, making some documentations. Um, we have drone assessment in partnership with Nokia, the Nokia Saving Lives Project. Um, but the the people who act who are actually um flying the drones conducting the assessments are the um staff or personnel from Nokia so they were considered as a volunteers of Philippine Red Cross so yeah to to give just to give background that um PRC are not yet into drones for drone mapping and for uh but only for assessment and for communications but um on this project, um, so to give background, um, we conducted the drone mapping for the vulnerability capacity assessment of the community readiness project. So this community readiness project is a project funded and uh, funded um, by the American Red Cross under the Disaster Preparedness and Risk Reduction Unit of the Disaster Management Service of Philippine Red Cross. So basically, the goal of um, the goal of this project is to um, ensure that the vulnerable barangays uh, have reduced their risk and ready to respond collectively to disaster. So um, communities, the individuals and in the communities, the target um, communities uh, will build their knowledge on disaster and vulnerabilities. Um, and um, to make sure that um, it will build a culture of preparedness and reinforce the networks and connectedness of the people um, in, in Catanduanes. So Catanduanes is one of the provinces of the uh, Bicol region. So that is why we always conduct a vulnerability capacity assessment. So this is actually a mandate for every um, disaster preparedness project uh, to conduct a DCA or a vulnerability capacity assessment here in disaster management service. But this is the first time that we conduct a drone mapping. Um, so why um, we, we conducted the drone mapping because we need to update the maps because of the vulnerability capacity assessment digitalization. This is also a project before, but it is now a part of the program of um, DMS it is a, uh, actually a, a project under the Norwegian Red Cross who basically um, the goal is to turn all the traditional data of the vulnerability capacity assessment into a digital format for a longer, longer and more operable um, data. So on the process of the VCA digitalization, so it started on the coordination, documentation, geotagging, encoding, updating of the open street map so drone mapping is not really part of the usual process because we are um we don't actually have we don't have budgets we don't have the capacity because as, as i've said um, um this is the first time that um prc conducted the drone mapping so when we update our open street map we always use the satellite imagery so and um so why did we decided or why we opted to use a uh, drone images or why we opted to conduct a drone mapping? So because of the poor satellite imagery, as you can see in these uh, photos, these are some of the areas that we have um, reached and some uh, have already old um, images. So we decided for us to better um, assess the capacity and the vulnerability of the area, we have to have an updated map, um, an accurate map. That is why we conducted a drone mapping. And American Red Cross, they have budget. <laughs> so the plan actually, um, 
the plan actually is that Dan will go here in the Philippines. They will conduct the drone mapping. But due to the COVID-19 restrictions here in the Philippines, they cannot go um, here in the Philippines to conduct the, the drone, drone mapping. So that is why um, uh, the Philippine uh, American Red Cross decided to, to use the personnel or um, uh, we, the, 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 the staff that has knowledge in, in or basic knowledge in drones, uh, those that are trained in drones, uh, will conduct or will fly these, these drones. That's why um, Dan um, conducted a, a virtual or training orientation for the pilot or the core member of the team. So, and then we uh, prepare the flight plan, prepare the equipment, we compose the team, we conduct the drone mapping and also the street level, level imagery and upload upload and process these images. So, as I've said, the drone mapping, uh, uh, the orientation was conducted virtually. It was two days only, or I guess three days. And then all, uh, this flight plan was um, made in drone deploy, but it is not actually the Philippine Red Cross who prepared all of this. It was actually Dan, we, uh, who created this flight plan. And uh, we basically just um, materialize or fly the drones for us to get the data or get these images. So um, there is, we compose the team and each team already have um, estimated um, time, how many hectares, how many images, how many batteries did we have to use. So thank you, Dan. So all of these are already prepared. All we have to do is to fly the drones and get the images. Um, we use Mavic um, Air 2 and Mavic Pro. We, we, we are composed of two teams and we use these two drones. 75% um, overlapping, um, estimated using uh, drone deploy 300 feet. And we use these equipment for our uh, street level imagery um for documentation purposes also and then we conduct the we conducted the actual mapping so um it is the the three projects um uh covers 20 20 communities 20 barangays in five municipalities of of Catanduan. so it took us around 7 days or 9 days Seven days or nine days to to complete the the activity. So community um, assembly, we inform the community uh, that we have this kind of activity. What uh, how are they going to benefit? What are the end products? So we discuss it to them, and then we conducted the actual drone flying. So the community are really interested. You know, it's a, sometimes we. We think we thought that um we we should bring uh uh monitor so that they can watch what's happening because um um they are really eager to look at the images or the, the uh, that we can um get on this um activity. So again um after getting all the images. Um, we process the data in open drone map. Again, this is uh, prepared by Dan. Um, he gave us a server where we can put our images and then it automatically um, give you these images. So these are just samples in Sukhan, Bagamanok, Porot Pandan, Pedro Vera Summit. But we have 20 um, communities. So 20 images were, um, drone images were collected. And then after that, the drone images are um, uploaded in the open aerial map so that we can, uh, this is just a sample comparison of the, of the satellite images we have before. And now we have this drone image, so very clear um, on this uh, photo. That's why very useful to conduct a drone mapping. So... Um, the next process under the VCA digitalization process is to um, conduct or update the OpenStreetMap because the base map of our of our maps 
is um, is the OSM. So what we did um, for the updating of the OpenStreetMap, uh, we partnered with the humanitarian OpenStreetMap team with um, OpenStreetMap Philippines and um, the MapBex. This is an organization, fortunately, um, one of the um, one of uh, former staff of Philippine Red Cross is now uh, uh, working in the humanitarian open street map. That's why we were able to partner with them um, to launch a project in, in HUT, Tasking Manager. And uh, we conducted Mapathon. We, we also conducted vir virtual training with HUT PH, uh, with me. Then we conducted Mapathon. I think there were two major Mapathons and then um, a series of mini mapathons to complete the 20 communities. Uh, we opted, uh, and then we upload the geotags through JOSOM, and then we did the quality assurance and quality control. So, this is the sample of the project launch in uh, Humanitarian OpenStreetMap. Um, the team members of the uh, of this project is composed of the volunteers of the Philippine Red Cross only. So before, uh, at first, we thought of um, including um, some people or other people outside the organization to contribute on this project. But we wanted to, uh, because of the timeline, we wanted to fast track everything. Um, and it will be harder for us because I am the only one who conduct the quality control and quality assurance. So it will be, uh, we thought that it will, takes time to if he, if there were other people who will uh, be part of editing or uh, updating the open street map so this is just a sample of um, this is in Lourdes Wag, Wagdas Tokyo in Baras Catanduanes so the green ones are the finished ones and maybe this is not yet finished because it's the settlement and we we captured the buildings, the roads, the land use, the waterways, and the points of interest, the the government facilities, water facilities. Uh, yeah. So I think it took again about a month before we finished the project here in Hot Tasking Manager because um as I've said the the members of the team uh here is the volunteers of the PRC and they were also conducting other activities of the project. So for a day, I think they allot one to two hours to, to for, for uh, mapping. That's why it took uh, almost a month before uh, they were able to finish the, the project in HUT. So after updating the... Uh, Collecting the drone, the, the drone images, conducting the drone mapping. We update the OSM. Geotags are also uploaded. Um, we we print the maps in field paper. So to, here in Philippine Red Cross, we don't have, and all the other chapters in Philippine Red Cross don't have a platter, a printer that can uh, print um, in large scale. That's why we use field papers um, for us to print the maps. And then that is the one that we use in the tabletop mapping. So um, with the geotags uploaded in OSM, with the updated maps, we were able to get all the important facilities or critical infrastructures in OSM. And we have an updated map, accurate map. Then we can conduct the tabletop mapping exercise. So this is just a sample of the tabletop mapping exercise of the, um, of the team. Uh, as I've said, we use um, uh, OpenStreetMap as our base map because um, the people in the community are so used in uh, looking at the spot map. And I think the OpenStreetMap base map is the um, closest to spot map, but it's an, uh, an accurate one. And But there are also communities that um, opted to use the drone images or the aerial images rather than the open street map because um, they think they are more familiar with that. Um, another example um, of the draw, uh, tabletop mapping exercise after updating the maps 
inputting the geotags. And then after that, um, after we conduct the table top mapping exercise, all the data that we um, collected here will be then digitized in the VCA Geo portal. So this is our portal where we where we store all our VCA data, the information. Um, this is the project. As I've said, this this were this was a project of the um Norwegian Red Cross, funded by Norwegian Red Cross, but already part of the program of PNC. So we store our data in the VCA center center of the VCA Geo portal. So and this is how it looks like inside. So uh, on the layer list, you will see the features and facilities, the capacity, the vulnerabilities. So all the data that they have collected during um, tabletop mapping exercise will be then digitalized or digitized here in this uh, portal. And um, the end products of this, um, of this, all of this process will be the map book, uh, maps printed in the tarpaulin with the OSM base and the maps again printed in tarpaulin in aerial images. So these um, products will be distributed or given to the barangay um, LGU uh, so that they can um, change this spot map. This is all of the target communities of the Philippine Red Cross in Catanduanes have this spot map in their barangay. So we wanted to give them something that is more accurate based on the data that we have collected to them and to the um, uh, all the data that we collected during the VCA. Um, so this is an example of the map book. Um, inside that, there are pages, the base map, which contains all the features and the facilities in the community, the capacity map, vulnerability, land use, historical hazard, landslides, storm surge, and the glossary. So I don't have an example of the um, actual uh, map book of the team. Um, they haven't submitted yet, but I think they already have one. And so just to give an example of what we wanted to give, I don't have also the sample of the uh, tarpaulin size map that was given to the uh, to the community, but um, just to compare, this was the spot map, and this is what we wanted to to give to the barangay. Actually, um, this is what we wanted to give into to the barangay, and also the aerial images um, that we um, that we have collected during the drone mapping exercise. It's very short, actually, because most of the preparation for the drone mapping activities was all, were given to us already. All you have to do is drone the fly, process the image, and um, use the drone products um, to our usual um, programs, which is the VCA, um, the VCA digitalization, up updating the OSM, and then create this end product so that we can give it to the barangay. Uh, because uh, why we opted to use this um uh, to to give these products because um as of now the VCA Geo portal is not yet open to um outside the Philippine Red Cross so only us can 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 access this one so we we want uh that's why we give them a printed maps um yeah I think that's it it's very very short presentation. Thanks, Elaine. That was great. Um, I think it looks like there's probably a few questions. Uh, so we'll go right into that. Jill, I see you have your hand raised. Yeah, um, I love the map, especially the last map, but also um, it's sort of like this is the predecessor of being able to distribute, just like you, you're having the drones identify, the drones can distribute food like it, the map shows where the most vulnerable areas are. Like if you know where there's a pocket of elderly or where you might have um, disability challenges or you know functionally challenged people, you can eventually use the drones to drop off supplies to areas mm -hmm. where people can't walk in or drive in to provide supplies. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. 
so I love I love what you presented because it just triggered off a whole bunch of ideas. I think even um, in the height of the pandemic, Italy did this. They dropped off drones in front of people's houses to provide them with supplies that they needed. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you for this presentation. It's wonderful. Thank you. Great. Thanks, John. Brent? Sure. Um, thank you, Elaine. This is really interesting. I'm curious. Um, it, it, it sounds like the the COVID situation forced you to do things more virtually, remotely, and I'm wondering if that's almost an advantage of the the work that you did because it, it demonstrated how little or how few people you need in the field and how much could be done remotely. Okay. Can you can you just describe a little bit more detail? Uh, you know the, the actual minimal or the number of people that actually operated the drones then how many people worked remotely and and where i'm going is would you recommend that as a model or do you think it would have been better if you had more people actually in the field i'm just curious about operationally how that what your thoughts are on that. Mm -hmm. um for the uh, number of people or the number of manpower um what we did um there were two a pilot um from Philippine Red Cross. And then we we hired, if we can call it hired, we hired uh, two, two volunteers that have, um, what do you call this? They were uh, drone pilot, but not for mapping, not for assessment. They were for covering the weddings, you know, uh, that are already based in the Catanduanes. That's why um, it's easier to, to, um, to move because they are already in the island. By the way, Catanduanes is an island um island uh, province. That's why I guess um less number of um covid uh covid positive affected um so um less uh, or minimum uh health protocols were um imposed in the area. So and as I've said, there were I think there were only two or three personnel that came from Manila fly to Catanduanes to conduct the drone mapping. So in our in each team there were two pilots, the one uh, one from P Philippine Red Cross and one from that are based in Catanduanes. And I think uh three to four um other other team members for spotter for the one conducting the street level imagery, and um I think became successful somehow it, no no it became successful the drone mapping activity became successful because the the pro, the chapter or the uh Katanduanes chapter in Katanduanes have a good relationship in the community um uh if i recommend it to be a model um i think uh, virtual orientations and um uh, virtual trainings are will be effective if the people involved or the one uh, have already knowledge or at least a basic knowledge. Um, I for for me for example me I am um I have knowledge or have experience in I have experience in sorry I already have experience in drone mapping. Um, so it, it was easier, it became successful because of the basic knowledge that the team already have. Um, for the community community activities, for example, other 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 activities of VCA, they were able to conduct it, but still there were a limited number of uh, participants, not really a lot of people. It is a challenge, but I think the team uh, uh, overcome these challenges very well. They have they have resources for one. They have resources. They have um, enough manpower to be deployed. Uh, less um, um, less anxiety, less hazard, or um, less um, chances of um, infecting COVID, getting COVID because of the area. I, I don't know if I was able to answer your question. Yeah, no, you, you certainly did partially. And then the the processing of the files and all the 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 other data management. Um, how far away was that done? Was that done outside of the island province, or was it done? Yes, yes. It was. I think, 
that is one of the uh uh i think that is one of the very hard challenge challenge in in, in this um activity uh, because it's an island um province uh limited internet connection so we were able to process some of the areas uh, the maps of uh, images of some of the areas, but uh, most of the processing were conducted here in Metro Manila already. So Dan um, actually helped us in processing this data. All we have to do is upload these images and then that's it. Um, for the storing of these, um, um, these files, it is... Um, uh, since we are already we are already here in the national headquarters, we were able to store it um, and process it properly and uh, easier compared when we were in the province. Perfect. Thank you very much, Shailen. We've got a question from David in the chat related to Brent's question. Was the level of effort required from the American Red Cross side different when the training report Training and support had to be done remotely um, compared to the expectation of it being in person. Uh, if so, was it more or less and by how much? Mm, I think yes, it will be different uh, because as I've said, it, originally the plan, uh, we are not the pilot. We will not be the one conducting the, the this uh, drone mapping activity. We will be involved in conducting the, maybe the, um step on the um updating the open suite map and um on the vca digitalization um so yeah i think there will be um different uh, on the level of effort compared when um they were able to um pursue ongoing here in the philippines compared to the expectation it being in person maybe Dan can answer also because uh, most of the preparation was um, uh, from Dan yeah so David I think when it came to preparing like the presentations and the, the training materials like it took probably about the same amount of time um, I didn't have to you know sit on a a plane flight for 18 or 24 hours or however long it takes to travel to the Philippines from Washington, D.C. Um, so I saved that amount of time and that uh, those are those cost savings. Um, I think some of the challenges around just worrying whether or not I had set up everything correctly and not being either to, to troubleshoot um, once they, they left the office for the day uh, to go do the flights and things. Um, and some of the challenges just uh, with um, being restricted to like when you had scheduled a virtual meeting for the training and not being able to um, kind of interact with with people more. Uh, so it worked out. Um, and I think, yeah, like a probably smaller amount of time due to just not being there in person. Um, but in terms of the the work required, just kind of shifted around like when it when it happened and how it happened. Brent, did you have another question? Yeah, and if no one else does, I don't want to um, you know occupy all the time here. The um, <clears throat> Elaine, is there any way to put a cost or or uh, you know what what would a budget be? I think you, you mentioned you did twenty communities. It, is, is it possible? I know that a lot of volunteers are involved, so maybe that's hard to do, but I'm just curious if, if you were to try to budget what it would cost to do this type of mapping that the way you guys operated it, is that possible to make an estimate? Um, I think um, we have, uh, let me check, but for starter, uh, American Red Cross uh, bought another drone for for us to to have two teams because originally they have one drone only so that's already um a cost but let me check because I, i'm not really part of the of the team 
um, I was a tech, I am a technical officer from the disaster management services. So whenever there are activities something uh like this, I was stopped to be to to actually um be part of the technical team, but not for this kind of admin and finance team. So I'm not really sure with the budget, but I get um I think um they have shared some of this. Let me check. Yeah, I don't want to take you off track. I'm I'm just curious. <laughs> it, it's it's like the hardware, the drones are reusable, obviously. Um, and okay. you're using open source software. So I can imagine like some of the expenses are probably pretty reasonable. But I, I'm just wondering, you know, if you were to try to scale this up and do 100 communities or or go to other areas, like what what kind of resources would be needed to to scale? Uh, that that was the where I was going with this. I think um we paid Dan for the drone deploy, uh for a month sub subscription, um so it will be just um a seven or ten seven to ten days activity so, uh one hundred fifty dollars I think we paid one hundred fifty dollars for one drone so that's gonna be three hundred dollars. For a month, for one month subscription, and um. And all others are for the logistics. Yeah, we did. Um, in order to get like the offline capacity uh, for drone deploy, we ended up having to get a subscription. Mm -hmm. I think in the future we would maybe spend more time uh, working out uh, a lower cost, or if possible, even an open source uh, mission planning and mapping tool chain. Um, but drone deploy was still uh, just because of our past experience with that um, comfortable using that. And so a small cost associated with that license, but you can deactivate that as soon as you're done um, mm -hmm. with your mapping. Um, in the Philippines, the volunteers are paid a, a small stipend. Um, yeah. And mm -hmm. I think that, you know, travel and lodging costs, but all those, especially in the more rural provinces are quite, quite reasonable, I think quite small. Um, and then what I think what makes this exercise more valuable is it's the drone mapping as part of the larger VCA process. Um, so in, in that case, there's going to be costs with um, the time you need to socialize with the community beforehand and then doing some of the tabletop uh, mapping afterwards with the community to get more details about the infrastructure and the risks and things like that. Um, so that all, uh, the other parts of the process, I think would also add costs. Yeah. Just given the quality of your map, so it, it, it sounds like a pretty cost-effective way. And I know it's a lot of effort and a lot of hours went into it, but it, it looks, you know, the, the, the quality of these maps versus the satellite imagery is just stunning. You know, it's so much more actionable than you would think. Elaine, can you say anything about more about um, kind of what a spot map is and how the drones and OpenStreetMap made for a better map? And is there any work to um, help the LGU access the OSM data in the future so that they can use it for the spot maps? Um, I'm not sure with um, municipal LGU, but for the Barangay LGU, um, they were. Um, they're actually not aware with the open street map. So uh, when Philippine Red Cross um, came to their community, that was the first time that they've heard um, with the open street map, with the OSM based map. So uh, this spot map are being, uh, I don't know if it's mandated by the municipal LGU, but all of the barangays or all of the communities that we have covered, um, they have something like this in Barangay. I, I'm not sure if this is uh, mandated or is it the Barangay who created it or it was distributed by the municipal LGU. So when we showed them the sample of the uh, what um, what an OSM map is, so um, they were uh, very eager. They wanted to have those. We 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 told them that this is the same as spot map but an accurate one. It will show you the updates of your area, geographic location, uh, where is your um, evacuations, um, uh, where are they located. So 
all the the points of interest can be easily located because they have um uh, because the open street map is the more accurate map as compared to to the spot map and um actually some of the spot map of the barangays are already um they don't have anymore because it's it's not there anymore due to typhoons flooding so um to have an a tarpaulin uh, a large a large size uh map which are accurate um uh, they were very thankful and um i'm not uh, actually i'm not sure if it's already distributed but when we showed them um on how it looks like um they were very eager and uh told us it it will be very helpful for 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 the community for the planning for the decision making um are there any features that are digitalized into the geo portal that are not added into OpenStreetMap? Yes. Um, in the geo portal, uh, in the OpenStreetMap, uh, we just uh, um, update the buildings, the key features, the facilities. But here in the open, uh, in the VCA geo portal, we also digitalize the capacity map the one that they have, um, maybe I can show you the portal itself. So this is the portal. So these are the informations that we've got during the tabletop mapping exercise. That's why it's important that the map is um, updated, that all the key features and the facilities are um, updated on our base map so that uh, we can when we do the tabletop mapping exercise, we can we can we can easily facilitate uh, why they did uh, decide that this is a high capacity, why is it moderate capacity, or why is it low capacity? And uh, we also have the vulnerabilities, um, areas with no lighting, areas with no warning signs, clogged drains, congested area, informal informal settlers, low lying area. So these are all um collected or uh, yeah, collected during the tabletop mapping exercise. Um, the historic hazards. So we also have the historic hazards, which we are not um, um, up uploading in the open street map. The fire flood, and there are informations, typhoon rolly, they, they already have. And and so on. All um all other pages uh, of on the map book and on the geo portal. These are actually the pages in the um, map book. Cool, interesting. Um, does anybody else have any questions? I think, Don, you were the one who prepared something like this for us. <laughs> I should have one last question. Um, Elaine, so are you expanding now? Are you going to continue to do more communities or is this like kind of a one time pilot or what are your plans in the Philippines? Um, the OpenStreetMap update, the Mapathons partnering with the Humanitarian OpenStreetMap um, and the VCA digitalization, these are already part of the program of the of the Philippine Red Cross, of disaster management service. But for the drone mapping, I cannot say for all um, because we were able to, to conduct this because we have American Red Cross who ha who, who's well-funded, you know, a project that is well-funded. But um, the, the, the drones um, that we used are not owned by the PRC, but owned by the American Red Cross. But um, if, uh, whenever we, uh, whenever we had the training for the VCA digitalization, I always say that drone mapping for us here in the Philippine Red Cross is a luxury. You know, um, we can actually proceed with the um with the vulnerability and capacity assessment with the digitalization, even if we do, if we do not conduct a drone mapping, but the quality of the maps that we produce, of course, will be much less as compared when we conduct the drone mapping because of the 
uh, all of the advantage that uh, a drone images um, has. So um, I cannot say that uh, this will be a one time. I, I will not let that happen. Um, of course, um, we still wanted to pursue and wanted to push all other projects here in PRC to conduct a drone mapping for a better um, BCA, better um, digitalization, a better maps. But I cannot say also that um, all of the projects here in DMS will follow because as I've said, um, not everyone has resources, capacity. Actually, uh, uh, most of the members who conducted this drone mapping are already not in the Philippine Red Cross anymore. So they are in different organizations already. If we, were, if we will be conducting this again, we will have a um, series of trainings again so that we can push this kind of activity. So for now, I cannot say that um, uh, all of us will follow, but um, I'm sure that this will not be a one-time thing. Great, thank you. Thanks again for your presentation.